Okay, so first thing we're going to do there is we're going to look, again, we're looking at the sine rule and it's finding a missing side, right? So just quickly to explain, uh, we're doing leaving search trigonometry. So the framework that we use for trigonometry is we start by looking at angles in a triangle having 180 degrees. In this case, I can find out what that angle is, but that won't help me find out what this side is. So it's of no importance to me, right? The next thing is 90 degree triangles. Uh, we don't have a 90 degree triangle, so we can't do Pythagoras' theorem and we can't use trig ratios. We can only use them if we have a 90 degree triangle. Okay, so the next thing that comes up is the area of a triangle. We don't know what the area is, so the area of the triangle isn't going to help us to find this side here. So the next thing that comes up is the sine rule, and we can use the sine rule if we have two sides and two angles, right? And when I say have two sides, that means that we're looking for one. So in this case, we have two angles. And in this case, we have one side and we're looking for another. So that would be considered having two sides. So if we have two angles and we have two sides, then we use the sine rule. So we're going to use the sine rule. And you can see there from the last question, the sine rule there, we have the sine rule. It's in your log tables, but, and it's an easy one to learn off. It's just the side. So the side A over sine of A is equal to b over sine of b. Okay, so in this case, what you need to do is I'll just sketch that triangle. It's always good to sketch them. So if I just can make this here, right, okay. So if we sketch them, I actually make that less of a 90 degree. Yeah. So this is 21, this is 58, this is x, and this is 26. The reason why I'm sketching them is because it helps you to visualize what you're actually doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pair these two together and I'm going to pair these two together. It's important that you realize that with um, the sine rule, it's always the angle opposite the side, okay? So I couldn't pair 21 and 26 together because they're not opposite. It's always the angle opposite the side. Okay, so in this case, two of these are opposite, so they go together. And in this case, these two are opposite, so they go together. So just to be 100% clear on that, I couldn't put 58 next together because they're not opposite. Okay, so you have to make sure they're opposite. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in this fraction here. And out of common practice, or like out of good practice, what I typically do is I keep all my unknowns in the first fraction. So in this case, the unknowns are the x's. So I'm going to put my green, um, the green ones there into the first fraction. So I can start off by saying that the side, which is lowercase a, you can see the lowercase a, so the side will be x. So I'm going to put x in there, all over sine of a, and sine of a is sine of the angle, and the angle in this case we can see there is 21. So I'm going to put in 21. That will be equal to B, which is the side B, which is 26. So I'm going to put in 26, all over sine of B, and sine of B is sine of the angle. And again, that's the pink one, so that's going to be sine of 58. Okay. In this case, what I need to do is I need to find the value for X. I've got a fraction equals a fraction, and any time a fraction equals a fraction, I can just cross multiply, okay? But like I said earlier, I try to keep my unknowns to the left-hand side because it just makes things easier when I get down to the bottom couple of steps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply, and I'm going to multiply the x by sine 58, and I'm going to multiply the sine 21 by the 26. So it's important that you just do the diagonals. So the equal sign stays in the middle and you do the diagonals. So like I said, I like to keep the unknowns to the left hand side. So I'm going to look there and see which one has the unknowns and X is the unknown. So I'm going to keep X sine 58 on the left hand side. So I'll fill that in there, X sine of 58. Okay, so that leaves me with the red ones there. So I need to fill in the red ones. 
which are at the other side of the equal sign. So that's going to be 26 sine 21. So 26 sine 21. Okay, now there could be questions there. Some people may have put the blue on the right hand side and put the red on the left hand side. If you had done that, it's the exact same thing. Okay, if you've done that, it's the exact same thing. The only difference is with your question, you'll end up with x equals um, whatever. Okay, so it'll be backwards for you when you get to the very last step. So the goal here is to get rid of, or to find the value for x. So we need to look at what's attached to the x there, which in this case is sine 58. And we need to see what's happening. So when I look at this, what I see there is that x is being multiplied by sine 58. Okay? So x is being multiplied by sine 58. So in order to get x by itself, which is what we're trying to achieve, so I want x equals... I want the x there by itself. So to get the x there by itself, I need to divide the left hand side by sine 58. Because if I divide the left hand side by sine 58, all I'll be left with is x. But because I'm dividing the left hand side by sine 58, I have to divide the right hand side by sine, sine 58. So 26 sine 21 will have to be divided by sine 58. Okay. And now we're down to the last step. We have all this. We know that 26 is a number. Sine 21 represents a number. And sine 58 represents a number. So I can type this into my calculator. And I'm just going to show you that now. So if we just get the calculator up and running. So we'll put that there. And we should get the video up there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just to keep that there. And I'll just bring that over so that we can see the actual sum that we're doing. So bring that over to here. And we should be able to see the calculator there. Okay, so you might have a different model, that's fine. So what you need to do is you need to turn on your calculator. Just turn it on. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode so you can see a small D up there for degree. If it's not in the green mode, then you need to press shift mode and you need to press three for degrees. Okay. And you'll see the small D up there. Okay. So uh, to type that in, we need to look at this. We're trying to type this fraction in here. So we need to press the fraction button. Let's press the fraction button. Fill in 26, 26. Sign 21, press the sign button, press 21. Close your brackets and come down there to your denominator. And in your denominator, we're going to put in sign 58. Again, we're going to close our brackets. And we're going to just move out of that and press equals. Okay. So you can see there, just double check to make sure you have the right input. So let's just check. Sign, or 26, sign 21. 26 sine 21, sine 58, sine 58, and that's our answer there. Okay, so our answer is 10 points. Let me just write that in. X is equal to 10.9870734. Okay, now these questions. They always ask you to give it to one decimal place, two decimal places, whatever it may be. In this case, I'm going to give it two decimal places. So I'm going to give the answer correct to two decimal places, and I'll just bring that down there so that we can see. That can be our instructions. Okay. So if I was going to give that to two decimal places, the answer would be I go back to one to I draw an imaginary line and in this case the answer will be uh, let me just put the answer in there x is equal to 10.99 and the reason why it's 99 is because this is greater than 5 if it's greater than 5 I have to round up the number that comes before it okay 
just while we're doing that, I'm just going to show you what would happen if we round it to one decimal place. Because if we round it to one decimal place, it would be different. So um, uh, if we round correct to one decimal place, so correct to one decimal place. Because it's a good, good, um, what you call it, it's a good way of, so if we look at this, so if we had x equals 10.9870734.1, if we were going to, uh, if we were going to round correct to one decimal place, we go back one, we have to draw our line, we look at the number that follows, which in this case is 8, so 8 is greater than 5, and because it's greater than 5, it causes this number here to round up. But obviously nine can't round up anymore. So it's going to round up and nine's going to round to 10, which will cause this to round to 11. So in that case, the answer would be X is equal to 11 because the nine rounds up. So nine rounds up to 10. So I carry the tens over and it turns into 11. So you could say 11 or you could say 11.0. Both answers would be correct, okay? So typically when you finish a question like this, you should always look at the answer you got. If you got 10.99 or if you got 11, whichever you may have got, just go back and make sure it fits in with what you're doing. This is 26. This being 11, that seems about correct. Obviously these are only sketches, but if you had a number there, if you had an answer of 3,400, then you'd know that that doesn't really seem to fit in well, okay? But in this case, 11 or 10.99 does seem to be correct, okay? So that's the sign rule getting a missing side, okay?